small child in the land of a thousand. One small dream of a savior tonight. One small hand reaching out to the starlight. One small city of love. a child, one small child that has come into the world. As we continue to celebrate Advent, we're, we're here today to talk about a challenge, a challenge that comes not just at Christmas time, but, but every week of the year, and that is the stress of life and how, how Joseph, how Joseph brought a character, a, a resolve, a faith that uh, really separated him for such a time as that. God used Joseph and Mary to celebrate this new Savior. Let's continue in worship as we celebrate with praise music.
could have life, a Savior that has come where we can take our sins and give them to the great burden bearer and celebrate Jesus coming. Welcome to this fourth Sunday in Advent. Uh, Just a few announcements before we get into the the heart of worship. Uh, I wanted to remind you, and I forgot my prop here that Sherry gave me. Uh, Our envelopes are in, (laughs) so uh, they're in the back. Uh, Sherry has them for the 2022 season. You know we don't have a a campaign, we don't have a money campaign, we don't have a saddlebag. We simply ask that you take your envelopes to go to Scripture, talk about uh, what, what, what Christ is talking about, about giving, about tithing, about, about giving to this church and to the kingdom of God. So make sure you take your envelopes today. This afternoon at 2 o'clock is our Pennsylvania flute concert today. We're gearing up for it. We've got some refreshments today. Please come back for this wonderful event. It's annual here. We're, we're really excited about uh, hosting this uh, flute concert today. Had had a wonderful uh, um, uh, gathering uh, for our, our dulcimer group, and uh, I'm hoping the same for today. Um, there's going to be a short meeting, concurrent meeting, both of the nomination committee today. We're going to move downstairs so we can set up for the, for the flute concert today. So both meetings, finance and uh, nominations, will be down, downstairs, very brief meetings. Uh, Salvation Army is looking for some volunteers. I've been announcing this periodically um, uh, amongst the weeks. You have to be able to to pick up 50 pounds, 50-pound boxes. And if you're interested in that volunteer work, please see me, and I will give you the the contact names. Um, As I said before, a very successful uh, Reads Across America, very holy event yesterday, 47 uh, separate wreaths were laid on veterans uh, to honor their service, their sacrifice. Um, we named names. We named them out, the branches, uh, what war they fought in. Just a really a wonderful event. So I think that, that is it in terms of uh, announcements, unless anyone else has anything for the good of the body. If not, I want to invite uh, Tim Lang up uh, this morning and my wife Donna to, uh, to light our Advent candle for this fourth Sunday. <coughs> Let me light the first three. Where is our lighter? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The one, the one little thing I... It was close. That's what counts. Christmas Eve, I will again remind you is... Seven o'clock on Christmas Eve. Come, uh, come early so you can get a seat. I think we're going to have a pretty, pretty well attended uh, worship on Christmas Eve. So, just add that to you, guys. We light this candle today to confess to all that who can hear our shortcomings, fear of life storms, and our moments when we are weak and at times wicked in our lives. Yet yearn for our Christian character. The candle light symbolizes the flame of Jesus and his miraculous birth we desperately want each and every day in our life. Forgive us, O Lord, and enter into our hearts and our souls. We confess our insensitivity to the needs of others and our ignorance of the character-building opportunities you present to us through your word and the life of Jesus. We confess our shortcomings, forgetfulness of your mercy, and sacrifice. Forgive us. Thanks, guys. Let's sing our first hymn. Let's rise. Oh, little town of Bethlehem, number 230 in your hymnal. Let's sing. Fears 
standing for the call to worship. Michael. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine that we may be saved. Come, Lord Jesus. Come to us, Emmanuel, and by your mercy open our hearts to receive your grace and answer your call that we may serve faithfully among those who need you most. O come, O come, Emmanuel. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit, you live and reign, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Please join me in the opening prayer printed in your bulletins. We pray, pray for, the for the nations, nations of the world, world and those who lead them, that wars may cease and peace and true justice may be known in every place. We pray for all of those who love and sorrow, fear or any kind of need, that they may be healed and strengthened by you, dear Lord. We pray for families that, like Joseph and Mary, they may care for their children and protect them and teach them your ways. We pray for the church that we may welcome Christ when he appears in our midst, especially among the hungry, the sick, scared, and homeless. We offer these prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I'll ask our ushers to come forward at this time to move amongst you for this morning's offering. I'll also invite our choir this morning. Welcome. Thank you.
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Father, these gifts, we ask a blessing a blessing, a manifold blessing, God, as we continue to serve your kingdom here at Glenmore, here in Chester County, here on this earth, God, until you come again in glory. We're asking God for a blessing on the giver, the hand that gave it, God. May he, she be blessed this day. We're asking this not just at Christmas time, Lord, but in all ways and at all times. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first scripture reading is from Psalms 80, 1 through 7, found on page 510 of your Pew Bible. Hear the word of the Lord. Give ear, O shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who dwell between the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh. Stir up your strength and come and save us. Restore us, O God, cause your face to shine, and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry against the prayer of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in great measure. You have made us a strife to our neighbors and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O God of hosts. Cause your face to shine and we shall be saved. Mm. Our second reading is from Romans 1, 1 through 7. And that's found on page 977 of your Pew Bible. Paul, a bondservant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh and declared to be the Son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. To all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Please stand for the reading of our gospel reading. This is found on page 835 of your pew Bibles, Matthew 1, 18 to 25. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was as follows. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Spirit. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not wanting to make her a public example, was minded to put her away secretly. But while he thought about these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take to you Mary, your wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit, and she will bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. 
So all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the Lord through the prophet, saying, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is translated God with us. Then Joseph, being aroused from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord commanded him and took to him his wife and did not know her until she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Michael. You may be seated. We're out of luck. (laughs) Thank you. Let's pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Chuck Swindell tells the the story of years of service on the board of the Dallas Theological Seminary with Famous Dallas Cowboy head coach Tom Landry also serving on that board. One day while the board was talking about the importance of character among the men and women going into ministry, Tom Landry leaned over and said to Swindell, you know Chuck, for the Cowboys when, when we draft a young player for our team we look for five things and the first is character. (laughs) Swindoll then responded to Landry, well, let me ask you this, uh, Tom, this is a tough question, but I'll ask it anyway. What if you find a terrific athlete who lacks character? What do you do then? How do you handle that dilemma, Tom? Landry told Swindoll, Chuck, that's easy. We don't draft him. Nothing in this world stands the test like a solid Christian character. You can handle any blast of adversity and problem, any surprise because of the deep faith you maintain, even even in the shadow of Christmas time. Several years ago, I had an assignment in Presque Isle, Maine. It was a week before Christmas that I needed to complete this investigative assignment that was approaching a a deadline of sorts. Now, not sure how many of you have been to this part of the country, especially in December, 32 miles from the Canadian border and cold, bitter cold. They, They basically have two seasons up there. They have winter and they have mud. <laughs> That's what they have. Well, while driving in my rental car from the airport in Bangor on I-95, I often saw the occasional wolf or buck deer on, his, on this rather desolate part of 95 heading north. Also, you will see from time to time on your way up to Presque Isle, you will, you'll see signs that warn you about moose. Beware of moose crossings. On this particular morning, I witnessed for the first time a moose venturing north in the lighter wooded area along the highway. Excited to see this animal and with not a, not a car in sight for miles, I, I pulled off carefully off the highway and waited for this animal to perhaps get a little closer. Well, it did get closer, all right. Now, picture this. <clears throat> it is about 15 degrees outside with a 7 to 10 mile an hour wind, icy cold. At this, at this the moose stopped and stared at me. I noticed that there was snow on the rack of this moose who must have weighed seven or 800 pounds. I also saw ice forming on the rack of this huge animal. It just stood there like a, like a century 
Against the wind and the, the cold air and the light snow blowing in the air, well, as I crept a bit closer, the moose took a few steps towards the, the woods momentarily. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed smaller animals in the woods that appeared like younger moose. I, I, I'm told they're called cows. <clears throat> What I also did not know at the time is that moose run about 35 miles an hour. I didn't know that at the time. So, so I walked slowly back to the car and proceeded north towards Caribou and Presque Isle. But what a wondrous sight to see. I witnessed a true image of faith in that animal of standing in the, the cold and the snow, tall and upright, while with family showing a true character of strength in the shadow, in the shadow of that Christmas season in that corner of Maine where I just happened to be by myself. Joseph showed that same strength of character through Mary's incredible pregnancy. Mary and he, not yet married, but this righteous man was facing a major dilemma of character. But nothing stands the true test as a solid Christian character. Ellen Wheeler Wilcox, American author and poet, writes, One ship sails east, one ship sails west, regardless of how the wind blows, it is the set of the sail and not the gale that determines the way we go. I guess the best way to describe Joseph was that of an understated man. And from a biblical standpoint, the mention of him is, well, it's quite underwhelming. I'm sure this kind of persona did not bother Joseph in the slightest, however, today with with the seemingly endless and insatiable appetite for social media and our face and our image desperate for attention, such people like Joseph are becoming few and far between. Horace Greeley wrote, Fame is a vapor, popularity an accident, riches take wing. The only character, the only thing that matters is that character endures. How true. Joseph was not put to the test with his faith, but to the test on simply how much he was willing to suffer for those beliefs. But the man, Joseph, was a, a man of strong faith and righteous character. He was prepared to do what was right, despite the pain he knew it would cause. But Joseph was perplexed at the same time about this pregnancy and wondered about it profoundly. Well, the narrator, this, this angel, appears to this man in a dream and speaks to Joseph straight out of the prophecy of Isaiah, chapter 7. Look, the angel says, look, Joseph, the virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son, a son, Joseph. Emmanuel, translation of that name, Emmanuel, is God is with us. When Mary informed Joseph that she was pregnant, he knew the child was not his, but respected this young woman and her character and the explanation she gave to him. Remember, Joseph had another trait besides doing what was right. He always tried to do it the right way, which went to his character and his faith in Almighty God. Joseph was also a direct descendant of King David. The angel told this godly man not to be afraid. Now, don't be afraid does not mean that God's Paul won't shake us to our very foundation, perhaps delighting us at times or rocking our world and changing everything. Obedience in our faith to God solely takes 
a fearlessness that many do not believe they have. While in a Russian communist gulag for eight years due to speaking out about the USSR's anti-religious campaign, Orthodox Christian Alexander Solzhenitsyn writes of losing both parents to death and his wife divorcing him while incarcerated. Upon his release from prison, he was dying of cancer that was growing so quickly that he could literally feel the difference in a span of 12 hours. It was at that point that he abandoned himself to God so beautifully in three lines of this incredible prayer that came in that dark hour. He prayed, Oh God, how easy it is for me to believe in you. You created a path for me through despair. Oh God, you have used me. And where you cannot use me, you have appointed others. Thank you, God. Thank you. Many times in my life, I have crawled across a desert floor of indecision, apprehension, fear, asking God for just a, a drop of water and wisdom, and all the time saying that if I would have known the Lord better at that point, His word, His ways, as one poet said, I would have come running with a bucket. With a bucket. So Advent and Christmas tide that starts on Christmas Eve can be a mixture of suffering with joy and birth and new life and death. That it is the reminder of the way of faith that always looms in the shadow of Christmas. I pray and wish that believers somehow get to skip difficulties over Christmas, but we don't. Faith comes from engaging in the deepest joy of heaven and also knowing Christ's deepest love for you and me as we walk through this thorny, confusing, and sometimes lonely holiday in life now together. Speaking of faith, have you seen the latest car ads for these models that parallel park themselves and for some drive by themselves? The one ad has this guy letting go of his steering wheel while driving over a huge high bridge and then, you know, clapping his hands to a song. Oh, if we could only have a faith and a hope in Jesus like that. Just like Joseph, my friends. We are called to serve Christ in the midst of complicated situations without knowing exactly where it will all end. The Lord God used this good man, an honest man, an obedient man who suddenly heard the voice of God and actually acted on it. Can you believe that? I can tell you without any hesitation that God honors that obedience and character in a person. When was the last time you were nudged by God and you, you actually acted on that? In our Romans text, this morning that Mike read, Paul calls himself a slave of Christ Jesus, an apostle, which means one who is sent of God, a slave of God, a Roman, can you believe this, who chose to be a slave? That was unthinkable. Unthinkable in the Roman world. Both Joseph and Paul were chosen by God for such a worthy cause. Not to mention Mary and her unique and divine calling from God. All had character that took seriously their calling, that deadlines would be met, all commitments would be honored, not for the accolades and the attaboys. No, no, not at all. Because despite what time of the year it may be in our lives, we become what we do. 
or what we fail to do. Our character is the sum and complete total of all of that. Our friend Joseph, earthly father of the Savior of the world and God of all creation, had many hurdles and scenarios to navigate during these days before Jesus' birth. I'm not talking about the average father here who concerns himself with his son's education and grades and all the accolades and attaboys and a possible baseball or football scholarship. I'm not talking about that father. Father Joseph displayed the faith and character of a man who can listen and learn and act. A distinctive character and quality that led to and revealed knowledge and wisdom and understanding and obedience which all result in a worthy walk. What a great earthly father of God was selected for Jesus. What a great earthly father. I have visited many sick and affirmed people in their homes and in hospitals through my 15 years in the ministry. Through these years and these blessed visits, I've come to know that the Lord teaches me that we all go through storms in our lives. I've learned that we are either coming out of a storm, in the middle of one, or heading into one. That's what I've learned. The question becomes, how will we face the storm? I'm sure, much like me and others, God will have your full attention at that point. So Joseph was in a storm of doubt, as described in the Matthew text, verse 19. Joseph was a good man and did not want to disgrace Mary publicly, so he decided to quietly break off the engagement, quietly. Verse 20, as he considered this again, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Joseph, the angel called, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. The child within her was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, she will have a son, and you are to name him Jesus, which means the Lord saves, for he will save his people from all their sins. After hearing this and now convinced that Mary was not unfaithful, he changed his plans quickly and obeyed Almighty God, even though many of his so-called friends disapproved of his decision. He went ahead and displayed for all to see his faith in the shadow of that first Christmas. Friends, don't avoid doing the right thing in your life because of what other people may think. Joseph was bold in his decision to do what was and is right, the courage to step up where most people are only willing to be led or step down. This was a man of guts. It takes courage to say, I will lead the way to take a lonely stand, to sacrifice their position, their security, and even their lives to make a principled stand for what is right and what is true. Joseph showed the boldness to even invite opposing opinion, in this case an angel of the Lord, wanting the truth, even risking being proven wrong. What a concept! What a concept! Joseph knew that Mary's pregnancy would have been assumed by authorities to be the result of an illegitimate union or adultery, a circumstance usually punishable by death, Deuteronomy 22:23. 23. 
Mary had not yet explained her situation to Joseph and could hardly have expected Joseph to accept her story of this miraculous conception of the child by the Holy Spirit. You see, Jewish law of being engaged or betrothed had to be legally broken. But Joseph, in all this and all his humble circumstances, although being a legitimate heir, as I said, to the vacant throne of David, showed his merciful attitude in this storm of doubt and displaying his true nature, listened to the angel and took Mary as his wife. Joseph would have been a high draft choice of Landry's Dallas Cowboys. Do you now sense the magnitude of this decision? Do you now sense the magnitude of this decision and this man's character? For you and me, and even in the shadow of Christmas, God appears and God will appear even today in your life if you believe that. What a disservice we pay to the gospel truth when we hear this testimony year after year and not respond to its power and promise. Shame on us that a virgin will become pregnant and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel. Believe this, folks, along with the character found in Joseph, even if it all doesn't completely make sense to you right now in your life, believe that. Let me close with this. Former NBA player Kenny Smith played for coach Dean Smith at UNC. In Kenny's senior year, the team traveled to Clemson and found themselves down 20 points at halftime, a a rare, a rare vision on a University of North Carolina team. So Coach Smith gave the team a little speech in the locker room. Coming out of this halftime speech, the lead was quickly cut to 15. Timeout was called. Coach Smith looked at the starters in the huddle and said, we're right where we want them. We're right where we want to be. Kenny Smith turned and was thinking, wait a minute, Coach. (laughs) We're still down 15 points. (laughs) But Coach Smith had repeatedly drilled them in practice after practice for these very situations like this where you're down double digits. And he knew it would come to pass. Well, not completely understanding these drills in practice, but knowing they built team character in some players, they found and soon found out why they did these drills in practice. Breaking out of the huddle, they started running these new plays, playing solid defense, just like in practice, And Dean Smith never called another timeout in the game. However, showing these young players the way to win with sheer character and grit through the storm of a loss that turned into a nine-point win. Proverbs 16 and 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and he will establish your plan. Joseph changed his plan Quickly obeyed God and married Mary. Sometimes we avoid doing what is right because it's too hard. It's too fearful, too consumed with what others think and just how we are seen. Joseph is not mentioned much in Scripture, especially after Jesus turned 12 years old. But we owe this day to Joseph and his life of strength in his belief and love for God, his willing, obedient heart, and how he knew that Jesus was someone very special for the moment he heard the angel's words. Nothing, my friend, in this world stands the test like a solid Christian character, even at Christmas time.
So my friends, we move into uh, this time of prayer and petition, corporate prayer as we lift up the, the celebrations and the joys and the cares that we have that are on our hearts that we bring today. Each one of you brought in a care. Each one of you brought in a concern. It's Christmas time, friends, and the stress level's up. The media's got it all turned up and ratcheted up. But we're celebrating the joy of this Savior born, this Jesus. But we petition him. He loves prayer. His favorite place for us is in prayer, on our knees. So we celebrate. We celebrate Jan being here after her procedure and her, and her uh, resilience. And we thank God for that today. We thank God for Jean, who's here today, whose house was a little singed over the week. And, we're, and we praise God that uh, he has family close by and that he's well and he's safe. Are there others, other concerns, joys, celebrations that we can pray about this morning? Just yell them out. I'm not going to hand you a mic. Who do we pray for today? What do we pray for today? We certainly pray for this country at Christmas. Thank you, John, for this 360-mile swatch of disaster, uh, people pulling together. Uh, uh, Donna and I are calling friends that live in Ohio, Ohio Valley and Kentucky, making sure that they're well and safe. I mean, this, this stuff happens in the blink of an eye. So we're praying for them fervently through the days and through the weeks. Are there others? Who do we pray for today? Certainly, you came in with concerns, Donna. Yeah. For Bruce Corbett, who was uh, taken to the hospital. Yeah. Got my eye on him. Others. Marcia. her first name? Mary Jane. Mary Jane. For Mary Jane. Third time around for cancer. We're praying. We're going to take these prayers into the week. We're going to take them into Christmas Eve and we're going to continue to pray for these people until the outcome of it, until God reveals himself to us, others. Prayers for our country. Prayers for leaders and the confusion that that we can, we can have about the, the course of our, of, our, of our liberty, course of our freedoms. We pray for our freedoms. We pray that, that we can sit here 10, 20, 30 years from now and still worship, freely worship. So we pray for our country today. Let me take us into prayer. Father God, we thank you for the day. We thank you, God, for, for the hearts and the minds of, 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 of those that are here today that go right to prayer, God, that uh, focus on these names. You've heard these names. You've heard the circumstances, God. You have them in your purview. We know that. We're asking God today, as, as we leave here today, Lord, that you would turn up Turn up our Christian character, God. Turn the, the heat up so we can, that our prayers mean something, God, that our walk is genuine and righteous and holy, that we remember the scriptures that we, that we read and we study on Sunday and through the week in Bible study, God, that we take them from our head to our heart. We thank you for the joy of healing. We thank you for doctors, Lord, for for technology, Lord, that leads to healing, God. We're grateful for, for Jan's doctors. We're grateful, God, for, uh, uh, for Jean's uh, quick, uh, quick response, God, and, and, and getting out of that scenario and that situation, Lord. And we're asking, Lord, that you would rebuild quickly and make Jean's life whole. Praying for these People in this large swatch, this tornado swatch, Lord, this freakish weather situation that left homeless, dead, Lord, we're praying for their families and we're praying for these 
these people to rebuild, for the very insurance companies, Lord, that they respond quickly and do what they say they're going to do, Lord, and that is deliver service. We put these folks in your hands, God. We put this Christmas season, this Advent season in your hands, Lord. We thank you for uh, Christmas Eve, for Christmas tide coming, and, and for that celebration of that birth, Lord. Bring us back into worship. Thank you that we do worship not just with, with preachers preaching, Lord, but with scripture that can move our hearts that music and lyric, God, that move our souls and make us feel warm and, and, and celebrated and loved by you, God. Keep reminding us, God, that you love us. We have human doubt, and we fight it every day, God. So work in us, Lord. Guide us, direct us, God. So we thank you, God, the sun is out, and we thank you for the warmth of that sun, Lord, and we we ask, God, that a, that a blessed event take place today at 2 o'clock with this flute choir, Lord, that uh, one heart, maybe one heart would be changed, Lord, with music, that they would turn to you, get on their knees, and ask you into their lives, Lord, or perhaps even it happened this day. We're praying that. We're asking that in Jesus, Jesus' name, his name alone, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, <clears throat> on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. Thank you for those prayers and that prayer time and uh, for your commitment to pray through the week. Let's stand as we sing our last hymn, Angels We Have Heard on High, and let me hear you sing this proudly and loudly. Let's sing.
I go out from this place and invite people to Christmas Eve service here at 7 p.m. We're going to have a, a wonderful holy event. Jesus is the reason that we do this. The invitation is yours. He says, you, friend, and I, we are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. They don't put a, a, a lamp under a basket. They put it on a lampstand where it lights up the entire room. Jesus said, let your light shine before men and women and children that they will see and hear and, and notice you. Then God the Father will be glorified. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go enjoy. Thank you.